The ear epidermal sheet preparation procedure is performed to isolate epidermal sheets that are suitable for staining and then visualisation using immunofluorescence microscopy. It is important to always wear a lab coat and gloves at all times during the procedure. A square Petri dish is prepared with drops of any commercially available hair removal cream. A separate drop is used for each ear and each row of drops is for an individual set of mouse ears. These can be reused depending on how many ears you have to prepare. It is optimal to work with batches of three sets of ears at once. Hair removal cream can be a hazardous substance as it is corrosive and an irritant. Therefore, it is best to use it only in small quantities and whilst wearing gloves. 12 well plates are filled with 1.5 millilitres of 0.5 molar ammonium thiocyanate per well. Four wells are required for each set of mouse ears. Therefore, three sets of ears will fit onto one plate. If you will need more than one plate, it is a good idea to number them. Next, place the plate on ice protected from light. 24 well plates are filled with one milliliter of PBS at pH 7.4 per well. Two wells are required for each set of mouse ears, therefore 12 sets will fit onto one plate. This plate can be kept at room temperature. Each set of ears is collected from a humanely cold mouse. They are then placed into a labelled tube containing PBS at pH 7.4. These tubes are kept at room temperature until all samples have been collected. The tubes are then brought to the lab, ready to begin the peel. Ideally, care should be taken during tissue collection to avoid the region where the ear joins the scalp. This area contains a lot of fatty tissue that can make the peeling more difficult. Only the area circled will be used for imaging after the epidermal sheets are stained. Assign a tube to each row of hair removal cream and write down the ID number of the sample. Because the ears will be removed from the tube, accurate identification is essential. After doing this, write the ID numbers onto the rows of the 12 well plate. Also write the ID numbers onto the 24 well plate. In addition, after each peel, your signature should be added to each sample listed on the sheet. This labelling is crucial to ensure that no samples are mixed up allowing us to accurately track the samples throughout the entire process. Remove both ears from the first tube using forceps. Dry them off on a tissue and place each into a drop of cream on the assigned row. Repeat this process for the other two samples in the batch. Leave the ears in the hair removal cream for four minutes at room temperature. When the four minutes are up, Transfer the ears from the hair removal cream to a tissue. Using the tissue, gently rub the ear to remove the majority of the cream. Be careful not to squash the ear by rubbing too vigorously. Place the ears into a 50ml tube filled with PBS at pH 7.4 and shake to wash off any remaining cream. Transfer the ears into a second 50ml tube containing PBS, again at pH 7.4 and shake again to thoroughly rinse. Dry the ears gently using a fresh tissue. Repeat this process with the other ears in the cream. Using an upturned Petri dish and two sets of forceps, peel both ears from the first sample into ventral and dorsal halves. Start at the base of the ear where it was removed from the mouse and work towards the edge. Try and keep the four halves with the internal, newly exposed side facing up. This is the dermis and will appear wet and shiny compared to the more matte outside epidermal layer. Carefully transfer each half into the plate containing ammonium thiocyanate in the row that was labelled with that sample ID. The inner dermis side that appears wet should be facing down and touching the liquid. The ear halves should float on the surface of the ammonium thiocyanate. If the ear half is placed the wrong way up, it will likely sink. If this happens, the ear should be dried off and placed back onto the ammonium thiocyanate the correct way up. Once all samples have been transferred to the plate, it should be incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 35 minutes. Ammonium thiocyanate 
is a chemical that induces separation of the epidermal layer of the skin from the dermal layer. For the next step, prepare a large Petri dish containing just enough PBS at pH 7.4 to cover the bottom of the dish. A small Petri dish should also be available to collect excess tissue that will be disposed of later. When the timer sounds for the plate, remove it from the incubator and place it on ice to stop the chemical reaction. It is also important at this stage to protect the plate from light. Transfer the four ear halves from the first sample into a Petri dish containing PBS at pH 7.4 so that they are floating on the surface. The remaining ears can stay on the plate as long as it is on ice and protected from light. In the Petri dish, use two sets of forceps to perform the second peel. The aim is to separate the epidermis from the dermis below. This step can be quite tricky and requires practice. Using the larger forceps, take hold of the edge of the ear. Then, use the finer tip-angled forceps to pull away the lower sheet. At the start, the top epidermal sheet can be very hard to see, but as you pull it away, it will become more visible. This sheet is very delicate, so care must be taken not to rip it. The semi-transparent epidermal sheet should be left afloat on the PBS, whilst the dermis removed from underneath should be disposed of in the small Petri dish. Once you have all four epidermal sheets from a sample, transfer these to the 24-well plate, putting two sheets in each well. It is crucial you check that the ID written on the 12-well plate that you took the sample from matches the ID on the 24-well plate that you transfer the sample into. Continue this second ear peeling process with all ears on the 12-well plate until all epidermal sheets are in the 24-well plate. Once all ears have been removed from the 12-well plate containing ammonium thiocyanate, the remaining liquid should be collected into a designated waste container and when full, this should be disposed of according to local guidelines. The waste dermis material should also be disposed of correctly according to local guidelines for waste tissue. Acetone can be a hazardous irritating chemical and should only be used in small amounts outside of a fume cupboard. When decanting from a large stock bottle to a 100 milliliter working bottle, it is advisable to always do this inside of a fume cupboard. Wearing safety glasses and using filter tips, prepare 1.5 milliliter micro centrifuge tubes by adding one milliliter of cold acetone kept at minus 20 degrees Celsius to each tube. Label one tube for each sample and place these on ice. Using forceps, transfer a sample's four epidermal sheets from the 24 well plate to its corresponding tube. Check that the ID on the tube matches the ID on the wells you are taking the sheets from. Once all samples are transferred to the tubes, place them on ice for 20 minutes. This step fixes and permeabilizes the tissue, allowing staining to be performed later in another protocol. Once the 20 minutes are up, and whilst wearing safety glasses, remove the acetone from each tube using a filter tip. This should be placed into a designated waste container. Acetone waste should be kept in a flammables cabinet and disposed of according to local guidelines. Add PBS at pH 7.4 to each tube to wash the sheets. After washing, remove the PBS, taking care to leave the epidermal sheets in the tube as they may stick to the outside of the tip. Finally, add 1.7 milliliters PBS at pH 7.4, containing 0.05% sodium azide to each tube, ensuring all sheets are covered and none are stuck to the lid. Sodium azide is used as a preservative, but can be hazardous and very toxic. For this procedure, it is used only at a 0.05% dilution in PBS at pH 7.4 in small volumes. When preparing this from a 10% stock bottle, it is advisable to use a fume cupboard. Finally, place the tubes into a box, ready for the next stage of staining and imaging the sheets. The samples should then be kept in a fridge at 4 degrees Celsius until required.